Howdy folks, let's look at some COVID data and use Excel to try to do some modeling. Specifically, we're going to look for cases where we can use exponential modeling. So lately, the Australian population has experienced a big Delta outbreak. Um, so I'm here on the Australian Government Department of Health website, and so they have a bunch of statistics here for COVID data. So let's get some of these statistics. So I'm just scrolling down here, it's quite a long page. So here we see data from January 1st of last year, 2020, all the way up to the present. And so we can see the outbreak last year, and these are daily cumulative cases. So you can zoom in and sort of if you mouse over, you can see some information. So on September the 5th, there was 1,680 cases. And you can do the same thing for cumulative cases as well. So I have this data here in an Excel sheet and I don't have all the data because I'm only looking for regions of extreme growth or decay so that I can use an exponential function to model. So starting here on May 21st, I just picked a day that has a very low case number. So we have one cases on that day. This is for all of Australia. And then coming up to the present. So the last data point was from yesterday here on the 10th uh, and there were 1900 reported cases. So just two columns, one's a date and one is a daily case. So the first thing I want to do here is create a plot in order to visualize this. So I'm just going to select my data, select all of it. If you want you can include the headings I'll leave them off. You can also just include the columns, but I have some other uh, rows in here without data. So I will skip those and I'm going to click insert. And then here in the charts section is where I want to be. And so if I mouse over a 2D line chart, then we get a preview. So Excel will automatically show you how these could look if it knows how to graph the data. So not just a line chart, we could have here a histogram uh, and it's already trying to calculate histogram in the background. Um, what else do we have here? We have, you know, a pie chart that maybe doesn't make much sense here. Uh, we have a scatter plot. This is normally what I like to use, a scatter plot, um, but for a reason that we'll see, I'm not going to use that here today. So let's just, um, oh yeah, so here is the bar chart or the column chart, and that's what we just saw on the website. Um, but uh, I want to use this one here, just personal preference. You could use this one with some ticks or this one. Um, and let's just go with this one for now. Make it a bit bigger. Okay, and we see we've got cases on the y-axis or the vertical axis here and dates on the X. And so this is in order, if you think the X comes first, that's your first column, and then comes Y. So this looks okay. And it's kind of what I was expecting based on what I saw on the website. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is add a trend line. So a few ways you can do this. One way is to click on the main chart area here, and you can see a box just came up. I'll do that again. So you just click in the main chart area and we have some options up top. So we can add a chart element and you can do lots of things here for how it looks. And down here we have trend line and there's a few different trend lines. And as you mouse over them, Excel will try to auto fit the trend line. So you can see which one maybe you are looking for. You can also click more trend line options. Another way to do it is to just right click straight on your data and you see all the dots show up on the data showing that the series is selected. I'm going to click add trend line and then over on the right a bunch of options come up and we can see here that it's selected linear for us and straight away when we look at it so the dots is my linear function and it's supposed to be a best fit but the function that comes from the data uh, actually isn't going to match, right? So we see here it crosses maybe once, twice, three times, maybe four times, and we got lucky it crossed at this dip. Uh, this is 
something that I often see students do when they first use Excel to fit trend lines uh, is they just toss up a line like this and maybe to click display equation on chart and they think, oh, sweet, right there. Got my model, you know, 12.8x minus uh, 567,000. Uh, so something crazy like that, all right? Um, but we shouldn't be doing this because the dotted line, this is the mathematical model, it doesn't go on top of the data we already have, okay? We don't know what will happen in the future. But in terms of what happened since you know May 21st, we do know exactly how that went. And so that's what we want to make sure that we capture is the behavior in the past. So I'm going to, I could delete that or if you click on your trend line, your options box comes up here again. And I'm looking for an exponential fit. So I clicked that. The linear went away, I'll do it again. The linear went away. Here is my equation on the chart. Let's make it bigger. For some reason, Excel always puts these up and they're crazy tiny. Uh, so again, where was my trend line now? Uh, it went away, so I'm gonna right click and say, uh, add trend line, uh, and it's trying to add another one. Um, but I clicked this down here, I clicked display equation on chart. So for the linear one, we see the equation come up. So there's actually two trend lines on here right now, but you can't see the first one and that's a problem. So I'm going to delete that one. Now, apparently this is my exponential function, zero E raised to the 0.0578X. Uh, and now this is a problem for functions because you know that zero times anything else should also be zero. So we could try to graph this, okay, to see what it looks like. And we will graph this in a second, but first we have to fix an anomaly in Excel. So we're not gonna use this one. And I know that I can't use it because I can't even see the trend line on the graph. Now, one thing you could do is change the scale to try to see the trend line, um, but I won't do that right now. Well, maybe, maybe we could. If you click on the axis and we click here where it says axis options, uh, we can change the bounds. So the minimum bound is the lower bound here on X and the maximum is the upper bound. So I could change this instead of in months, I could instead of month nine, I could change it and go ahead a month and put 10 and press enter and it compressed the graph to show another month's worth. And I could do the same thing on the Y axis. I have to click on it and then I'm in my axis options, my bounds, I could say here 4,000 instead of 2,000. And you see again, it shrinks. Now this is helpful to help you zoom out, uh, but we still don't see any dotted line representing this exponential function on here. Okay, so that didn't necessarily help. So let's just undo those two adjustments uh, and talk about why we cannot see an exponential function on here. So let's go back to our x, x, x axis options and look at the axis type. It says automatically based on data, text, and date. So these are in dates. And if I change the dates to a text-based option, we see uh, that automatically we now have a trend line showing up and we have here an equation that no longer has a zero up front. So that's key. There's no longer a zero up front. Click back on my, click back on my axis options. So I click text axis here. Um, and you could do a few other things in here. You could change how you want that date to be displayed. So these labels also changed. And let's just for a moment change how it looks. Okay, let's go with this. I always spend way too long doing these things to get something that, that looks reasonable. So here we have the equation for the trend line. And it looks like it fits pretty good down here. It's definitely tracking very well. 
Uh, and it looks like it's very good up until maybe, what is this, uh, a week or two ago, up until maybe a week ago. And by the time we get to the last data point, it looks like the dashed line is well ahead of the data. So the data value here is 1900. If I go look at my data, I can see that the last data point is 1900. Uh, and it looks like it's tracking well above that, and especially if we try to think into the future. So we can use uh, Excel to kind of do a forecast into the future, uh, and I'll get to that in an upcoming part. For now, let's take this equation and graph it. So I'll use Desmos to do this. So we had 3.2772. And then we had e to the 0 0.0578 x. All right, so here's my exponential function. And I can zoom out and sort of really get a feel for how this function works. So one thing to note is the intercept of this function. If I zoom in again, I can click the intercept and it says 3.277. And that matches exactly with this number here, okay? So that value out front, that is going to be the intercept on the axis. Now I'm using this word intercept because in Excel, there's also an option to choose your own intercept. So if I click on the trend line and I click here where it says set the intercept, okay? This changed the intercept to one. So that means the y-intercept is going to be one. If I look at Desmos, the y-intercept would be down here now. But we know that the intercept here is, is 3.2 on the model, but that's not the real data. So one thing we could do is look at the real data. And the first data point, okay, has one reported cases. So we could take that to be the intercept which is exactly what, click back on the trend line, which is exactly what this does. Now it didn't look like anything changed down here, but if I turn off the intercept, you can see the difference between the two models, okay? So even though without setting the intercept to one, it says I had three cases to start with when really I only had one, even from that, the model is actually better and we can just tell that visually by seeing it hit way more data points. So again, if we take off, or we go to the other model by putting the intercept at one, and you can mess around with the intercept, we could put 3.22 in here, and then we recover basically what we had before. Uh, we could put uh, 100 in here, and we see how that changes the equation, okay? So 100 was obviously quite high. We wouldn't want to use that. You'd want to you know, scale it back and see if that is what you're after uh, in terms of checking the model versus the data. So that looks okay. So one more thing I want to talk about, uh, which is a quirk of Excel, just because at some point you're going to run into it and you're not going to know uh, why Excel is doing that. And that is have a has to do with turning dates into numbers. So I'm gonna go back to my series here, my x-axis, which are the dates, and I'm going to go to the options. Now we clicked automatic and we changed it to text. Now if you select date, that can really help because the labels look a lot better, right? And we now have bounds on here, which can also be a lot better, we can say, um, major ticks happen every seven days, which is obviously a week, um, or we could even change it to months and years, and you could have minor ticks and so on. Uh, and that can be a nice way to space out data that uh, is mapped to a date, which in this case uh, uh, is true. But now if we look at my model, right, I can no longer see my orange line, and I'm back to this point of zero times e to the 0.0578x. And I think, well, where the heck is my model here? So um, this also comes up if you do a scatter chart. Remember our type of chart 
is a line chart. If we change this to a XY scatter chart, okay, we're going to run into the same issue here. So I'm not going to do that, um, but the problem can be solved in a similar manner. So this comes from the fact that this date represented as a number is what is used to do the exponential modeling. Okay, so the date, you know, 215-2021, that date doesn't mean much in terms of a mathematical model. Of course, if we look at our, calcul our uh, graphing calculator here, we have, you know, x-axis and units, the, but these units aren't dates. These are just numbers, and same with the y-axis. So Excel has the same problem. So one thing we can do is we can say, let's make this cell equal to this cell. Okay, so those cells are the same. And then if we change the format here from date to a number, okay, we get an error message, first of all misleading and of course it's misleading it's representing um, May 21st as 44,337 okay and if I do this for all of the numbers we can see what's happening here 44,000 and it's counting up by one so Excel behind the scenes has to translate a date into a number and this is the number that it's using and now this number comes from, I believe it is January the 1st, not 20, uh, 1900. Okay, so if I do the same thing here, Excel says that January the 1st, 1900 is day number one. Uh, and then it just counts up from there. And so, you know, now we're at about 44,500. I can go down and... And look, today is day 44,450, I guess, plus one there. Okay, and so what this model here with the zero in front of it is trying to do, it's trying to map to this column of numbers and these daily cases. So instead of on the x-axis it counting from one, okay, it's trying to count from 44,000 and then it's only going up to 44,450. So zero, which would be the origin, all the way up to 44,336 are unaccounted for. And in the background, the model is trying to do this. So it's, it's causing quite, uh, quite a headache. Uh, and so the way around it is to, if you come across this situation, the way around it is to just say that your first case, I guess it was this one is your first day, right, with one case, and you say that that's just day one, you label as day one. And then, so we have data from day one up to day 113. Uh, and then we can, instead of having the date column, we can select uh, this here days column with cases. Uh, and then that should change it. So let's just try it. So if I click on my chart data here, and then I'm going to go in design, click select data. And right now it's got columns C and D. Okay, it's just called series one. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna edit that uh, and I don't want to change the D columns. You can see the range here, uh, which is D7 to D119. So say OK. But I do want to change this one, which is C7. And I'm going to change this one to A7 to A119. And we can see in the background that First of all, the labels, then now they start at one uh, and they go all the way up to 113. We'd have to fix that to make it easier to look at. Uh, but now we can see that the model has reverted back to what we were after before. 3.2772, I believe, was our coefficient. Yep. And then e to the point 0578. So now we recover exactly the model in the background. So Excel was smart enough to do that in this instance. I'll cancel that. But it won't always be smart enough to do that, especially if you use like to use a scatter plot. So that was uh, a segue.
Okay, in the next session, we are going to look at cumulative cases. So back on the government website here, uh, cumulative cases here on the right-hand axis, and that's represented by this yellow line.